Colin. I'm just getting ready to stream this live, so just take me a few seconds. Excuse me if I run back and forth. I'm, I'm cooking some curry right now. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I can almost smell it. Oh my God, it's, it's delicious. It's all vegetables. Sounds good. All right, I think we just went up. Yep, it says recording. And give me a second, just double check. All right, there we are, good. So, well, welcome everyone. Nice to see folks. Um, oh, Allison, let me, and Colin. So, board members, you can control your volume, your co-hosts now, or you will be in a second. So, you can turn it on and off. Oh, great. I was muted, so that's good. And where are you, Allison? Okay. He is muted. Great, great. All right. So, well, nice to see you folks. Um, so, I think Allison's still muted, right? She should be able to control her volume now. I don't know. Okay. She... Am I there now? You're there now. Excellent. Very right. good. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, so, I was thinking first, just do a quick round of introductions, um, and then we can let Jessica take it from there. So um, I'm John Thibodeau, um, president of the Deering Center Neighborhood Association, and I'm glad to be here. Allison. I'm Allison Kenway. I'm a member of the Deering Center Neighborhood Association, <laughs> and I'm happy to be here. All right, all right. Monica. I'm Monica, a member. Happy to be here too. <laughs> and cooking a curry, which is even better. Cooking oh yes, I, I'm over here getting down with that curry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Colin, how'd you go next? Uh, Colin Apps, uh, Vice President of the Deering Center Neighborhood Association. Terry? Uh, Terry Petnoff, I've been on the board for 10 years, I think, oh. ish. Oh. <laughs> so uh, happy to be here and happy that you could come. Thank you. And Bobby, you with us remotely? Can you hear us, Bobby? Yep, Bobby Cope, board member. <laughs> All right, thanks. And Jessica, if you could introduce yourself and then sure. take it from there. Well, it's nice to meet you all. Thank you for having me. My name is Jess Marino and I live in the neighborhood. And I am, as well, I have three kids who all go to the schools up on Stevens Ave. And I am a member of the District Advisory Building Committee for the four school renovation. Um, so, I, I'm here to answer questions, but I also thought I'd just quickly update you on where we are now with Longfellow, the Longfellow renovation, because I know that it affects the whole community and the whole neighborhood and the construction will certainly affect the neighborhood a little bit. So um, I can give you some updates on that also. Um, but if you have any questions, just stop me at any time. John, do you need to introduce a new person who came in or are you good? <laughs> I think we're good. Keep going. Okay. All right. So um, I am going to share my screen. And the first thing I'm going to show you is something that I can take no credit for. This is the brand new, amazing Buildings for Our Future website that the architects designed. Um, it's really nice because the Portland Public Schools website is impossible to navigate and it was really hard to find buildings for our future information and we have a lot of it because this project's been going on since 2013. Um, in 2017, city voters approved a $64 million bond to renovate Lyseth, Longfellow, Presumpscott, and Reiki. Right now, we are in the process of working on Lyseth. Lyseth went first and um, we are 
probably about a year out from completion of that project. What happened about a year and a half ago as Lyseth went was underway was we realized that doing these projects sequentially was going to take an incredible amount of time and more money. And there was a lot of concern that um, construction costs were going to escalate and that whichever school went last was not going to have the money they needed to properly do their renovation. And the whole idea of the renovation is to bring equity across the elementary schools so that every elementary school has um, features of 21st century education and learning and the space that they need. So um, to make sure that there weren't any buildings that were kind of left behind and also to get the project moving a little more quickly, we are designing, bidding, and building the other three schools all at the same time. Um, so I will show you now a little more about what's happening at Longfellow. Are there any questions so far before I show you that? All right, I'm gonna guess no then. This is the current Longfellow detailed scope. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Longfellow building right now. Um, this is, so let's, this is the exterior view with the new additions. Right now the building is this wing, the main wing, and the side kindergarten wing. The new addition will have a two-story addition off the back, which is going to be a new cafeteria and warming kitchen. It's going to be um, additional specialist classrooms on the lower level, and it's going to be a pre-K classroom on the second level. There's going to be an elevator. Right now, Longfellow is not accessible. Um, and so this is something that parents have been advocating for for decades is to have an elevator in the building. Um, right now, kids who can't use stairs have to stay on the first floor all the time and classrooms actually move down to the first floor when needed um, for a student who can't access the stairs. And then you have the side of the building over here, which is where the parking lot is, and that is going to be the new entrance. Um, so I can show you that in a little bit more detail. So in the new addition, this is the lower level, which is the basement, to be honest. And the basement right now is not a pleasant place to be. And that's where the, there is an art room, there's some storage, and there are actually classrooms down there right now um, for ELL students. Um, there's a Title I math and reading teacher down there. It's very dark. Um, it's designed to be a basement and not a learning space. So originally they weren't, the architects weren't gonna do anything with the basement, but what they realized is really the back of the building is the best place to do an addition. And the ground is sloped at the back. So they're going to put an addition on this lower level and really open it up a lot. There are going to be more staircases. There's going to be more light. There's going to be a big long exit back here. There's going to be a cafeteria staircase from the first floor and then those ELL and um, Title I classrooms are actually going to be pretty nice classrooms off the back of the building with windows, natural sunlight, um, and some exposure to just the outside as opposed to the corner, that front corner of the basement, which does not really get much sunlight over there. Um, that's a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. Oh, and new bathrooms. There's no bathrooms down there. So there's going to be some restrooms for kids. And then you can see that's where the lower level of the elevator is. On the first floor, there's going to be a lot of reconfiguration. Um, this whole side is going to become one large library space. Here's the new addition on the side, which has a ramp. And the reason for reconfiguring the entrance is to make it ADA accessible. Um, those front stairs are really high and there's no way to put a ramp on that front staircase and to open up this whole vestibule to make it accessible. Um, so this is gonna be the new entrance. This is going to be a new office area, some specialist classrooms through here, um, new renovation and toilets over here. There are not enough bathrooms at Longfellow right now for students and especially for teachers. Um, then you've got a 
a corridor here. This is kind of the top of the cafeteria. And then you have a pre-K room over here. Longfellow is right now the only elementary school without a pre-K in it. Um, so that's a little more detail of what that's going to look like. Um, second floor doesn't get a ton of renovation. In the corner, there are going to be some renovations to add more bathroom space. And then on this side, what's happening over here is there has to be a hallway, a corridor to access the new elevator. This was one big classroom that was used for special ed and was really too big for its needs. Um, it never has more than, um, I think, five or six students at a time. So that's going to be half the size. And then there's going to be new um, bathrooms for teachers and a little hallway over there um, to access the elevator. Um, a lot of other upgrades also, upgrades to some wiring, upgrades to the sprinkler system, which is really important. There are going to be security cameras um, and the new entry vestibule is going to actually allow more um, ability for people in the office to see who's coming up to the building because right now they can't. The whole area is very close off. Um, some more ADA compliant signage through the school, obviously the elevator, some new exterior lighting, um, and some new electrical work that's going to be done in there. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. Does anyone have any questions or want any more details about any of that? I have one question. Um, sure. So the tiles, I think were asbestos tiles. Is that right? Oh yeah. How could I have forgotten the asbestos? <laughs> is that, and I know that's, it's a big cost. Yeah. Thing. Where is that? There, point? the asbestos is everywhere. And so what I, I mean, what I'm showing you, I wonder if it's on this slide, because I'm showing you what it's going to look like afterwards, but I'm not showing you what it's going to look like before. And I probably, I could find that if you wanted to. Um, all of the asbestos, here, here we go. Um, everything, all the flooring, abate the existing vinyl asbestos tile, new rubber flooring, um, removing all the existing carpeting. In the casework, anything that contains asbestos is going to be going. Um, and they're going to look at the plaster ceiling. I think they're not sure how, exactly how much asbestos is in the ceiling and in the casework, um, but any asbestos in the building is going to be removed. This is the most expensive part of the project, actually, more expensive than putting an addition on. Um, and it's also what's going to take so long. So this is going to take um, at a minimum of two years, the renovation, because the kids are in the building. There's nowhere for the kids to go. <laughs> the asbestos abatement, most of it has to happen in the summer because you can't have kids in the building. Um, so what it's going to look like is summer one is going to be major asbestos abatement while the kids aren't in the building. Um, when the kids come back to school, there'll be temporary flooring in. And then they're going to, during the school year, be building the addition. And the um, building's going to be kind of divided up into pods, into sections. And they're going to do classroom renovations one section at a time. There are going to be three modulars, three modular classrooms in the parking lot. And so the three classrooms that are undergoing renovation will go out to the modulars for that half of the year. And that's the hope that kids won't be in for more than four months out of the school year. Um, then they'll move back into their newly renovated classrooms. Three more classrooms will move out to the modulars and those classrooms will get done. Um, it's a very thoughtfully staged project because there are going to be areas that kids don't have access to. Um, you know, things are going to need to be stored in other places. There are going to be outside areas that are affected. Um, the back area where there's basketball hoops is going to be like the construction staging area. So that will all be off limits to kids. That's where equipment will be. 
um, construction equipment is going to be brought in the back of the building through the Deering High School parking lot. Um, so there'll be no construction equipment where kids are. There won't be any on the playground. There won't be any in the front of the school where kids are coming in and out. So that actually works out really well. At Lyseth right now, um, it's really hard because there is construction equipment all around the building. And so there are new temporary walkways and temporary entrances. Um, and we won't have as much of that to contend with. But we're certainly going to lose um, parking space for teachers in the parking lot. So um, we're going to have to talk to Deering about, you know, how much, you know, what areas of the parking lot we maybe we can dedicate for Longfellow staff. Um, and make that a little more workable. Um, and then the second story will kind of happen the same way the next year. Over the summer, all the asbestos comes out of the second floor. Um, while the kids are not in school, they come back in and the renovations, the interior renovations happen. The addition for the gym, I mean, the additions are almost kind of the easiest part because it doesn't affect kids. Um, because you can do the addition and then enter the school and do all that finish work. Um, but the addition will be done throughout the, throughout the two years. This, of course, is assuming that school is going forward in a normal fashion. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. Um, Hopefully we're not in this situation next school year where we have this, you know, hybrid scenario. I think everybody's operating under the assumption that by September we'll be okay. No. Thankfully, we are not going to start construction until earliest June after the kids are out of school this year. So we're going to get through this school year. Um, so where we are in the process now is the um, architects are finishing up all the construction documents that they need. And then in January, um, they'll put it, the project out to bid. And um, different contractors will put their bids in. It will go through this whole process. The school board will approve the winning bid. Um, and it's pretty much the lowest bidder gets the job. And um, they'll know that construction needs to start in June. So... And uh, who is the architect? Harriman Associates. Um, and they were, so we didn't have to hire the same architect for every job and we don't have to hire the same contractor for every job. Um, Harriman did the Lyseth project and we were really happy with them. And then when we decided to do all three schools together, we put the architects out to bid um, and we had a lot of people who were interested because obviously it's a great project because they get to do three big schools. Um, but we chose Harriman again. They've just been really good to work with and they're very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, I think they've gone above and beyond doing um, assisting the school district because this is really hard for Portland Public Schools. They've never renovated They've never done anything like this. Um, our new schools that we have in Portland were all built by the state. Um, renovations that were previously done. I think the, you know, Riverton had a renovation in the early 2000s. Lincoln had one in the 1990s. So this is going back a long ways and it was never more than one school at a time. So this is three, you know, four major renovation projects and being run essentially by people in the facilities department at the Portland Public Schools. So um, everyone's really relied on Harriman a lot and their specialty is um, school design. So this is what they do and this is thankfully what they, what they know how to do. <laughs> Great. Um, I do want to, I'm going to show you just one more, let's see, I'm going to show you just the presentation from the other day does have actually some 3D pictures of what the school is going to look like. Although, and so this is Lyset. This is how amazing Lyset is looking right now, which is really exciting. Um, sorry. So the colors are terrible, but this is kind of showing you um, this new side entrance over here. And this is showing you the big new addition at the back. 
So that whole back part, that's the sledding hill right now. So kids yeah. will have to get one last winter of sledding in this year. <laughs> um, and then we're going to have this really nice big addition with, you know, walkways around the side so kids can access, they can come into lunch from the playground up here. They can come into lunch from the playground down there. Um, yeah. I have any questions or thoughts, just speak right up, yeah. I've got more questions. Okay. <laughs> um, so I know construction costs were a big issue and, and they had spiked um, over the last few years. Um, but I, this, I'm a little bit dated now, but I think as of a few months ago with, with COVID, there was a sense that maybe they would come down a little bit. I'm wondering if there's any more news about that because the construction costs could sway whether there's more that w could happen at the schools or, or less. Exactly. And so one of the things that they do is, um, so there are building level committees too, where the district committee that oversees the four schools, but every building has their own committee. And one thing that they did last week was they um, ranked what are called ad alternates. Like if we have leftover money, what are your top priorities? So they went through and did that. Um, and there is not usually a lot of leftover money, but so what's happening with construction costs is mostly that they're just not escalating as much right now as they were. So the hope is that they're plateauing a little bit. There has been some increase in cost in materials because the supply chain in some ways is kind of broken down. So we talked about that last week. Um, and they don't seem to think that'll affect us a lot because it seems to be more wood building materials that are really escalating and there's not a lot of wood going into any of these structures. Um, it's mostly metal. Um, so they're not incredibly concerned about that. So Harriman has cost estimators who go through this project every single month and check costs. Um, and it's, you know, like line by line lighting you know, it, building materials, flooring, things like that, so that they hope to be in a pretty good place when they go out to bid. They said that their two most recent projects that went out to bid this fall came in slightly under um, what they thought. And so um, they were really happy with that. When we put Lyseth out to bid, we did not have that experience. Things were just like skyrocketing as things went out to bid, it just was, it was insane. And um, a couple of the things that happened was they just couldn't get subcontractors who were willing to commit. And we had these astronomical costs for electrical that were, I think they estimated, you know, $250,000 for electrical and the electrical subcontractors said like 1.5 million, <laughs> you know? I mean, it was clearly just taking advantage of the situation. Um, we originally took that proposal because it was like the best we could get, but then thankfully the general contractor found a different subcontractor for electrical and was able to get those costs down. Um, we are hoping that that doesn't happen again. Of course, you know, you just don't know for sure. And obviously who knows what is going to be happening in the world six months from now. Um, so that is a little, you know, I mean, it's, defi it's definitely not a time where you can count, count on these things. Um, we just really hope we're not in a position where we have to cut anything from the projects. Um, but, you know, I have faith that Harriman has had some success recently and feels good about the numbers where they are now. Um, I definitely have been concerned that I think Longfellow is one of those projects, you know, Reiki's the most expensive project. It's, it's a huge project. There's nothing that can be done differently. They're rebuilding the whole interior of this entire massive school. It's 20, $21 million. Like that's it. There's no way to make it cheaper. Um, so then it's kind of between Presumpscot and Longfellow and Presumpscot's project is pretty straightforward. They need to double the size of their school, put a big addition on the back. And so there's really like what they need is what they need. And so Longfellow, um, my 
advocacy for Longfellow has always been around, I think that would be the easiest school for them to take away from, you know, because overall, the school is not struggling, you know, as far as space, it's not bursting at the seams. Um, there was one proposal that went through that would not have put a cafeteria addition or any real addition on the school, which I was really unhappy with because if we're looking at equity, we don't wanna be the only elementary school in the district that doesn't have a cafeteria. We don't wanna be the only elementary school in the district that doesn't have a pre-K for our neighborhood. Um, so the equity piece is really, I think what we always need to come back to um, because, and we don't know, you know, what might happen with redistricting and as populations in the city change. So we really need all the schools to be accessible and to have everything that, that every other elementary school has. Sorry, John, I just went on like a big diatribe. No, 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 it's been a tr <laughs> tremendous presentation. Um, <clears throat> any other questions or comments or? Yeah, I just wanna, Jessica, great presentation. I'm, you know, I've got a kid in, kindergarten and in second grade in Longfellow. So this is exciting to see, but it's also like, okay, wow, that's a lot of disruption yeah. as well. Yeah. So do you, and you probably don't know this, but do you have an idea whether kind of the, the class sequence will proceed or are they gonna have to merge classes, you know, make bigger classes or, or think about the way they do classes differently given the disruption? I don't think that much will happen as far as class size or disruption of, you know, the, the makeup of, of, how they, um, of how they have their classes organized now. I know that at Lyseth that hasn't been an issue and they similarly have had to do this move out to a modular pod system. Um, and they've been able to keep their classes intact and the class size intact. I think, um, the th things you might think about as far as, you know, kids moving out to mods, there might be consideration, you know, kids who have physical disabilities are not going, you're not going to send them out to a modular. Um, so there are some kids who might get priority to be in a classroom that's going to be in the building for most of the year. Um, but besides that, I don't see it affecting that much at all. I will say that, so right now, while we're meeting, there is also the building level committee for Longfellow is meeting. So they're also, they're getting all this information for the first time tonight. So um, I'm not sure what their reaction, you know, the Terry and the staff and, and everything will be, but I've spent a ton of time at Longfellow over the years and I've worked there a little and I know everyone there pretty well. And I think they'll be, I think they'll be flexible. Yeah. Um, I think they're, you know, obviously nervous about it. And it's a, it's a lot of work for a principal. I will put that out there. So everybody be kind to Terry for the next yeah, two the years. The pair is because, great. And, yeah. you know, and luckily the kids have, you know, learning disruption, right? Now, yeah. now it's not fortunate, but they are certainly learning it. So yeah, they'll, they'll just keep the pattern going, I guess. I know if they can do this, they can do anything. Jessica, um, are, do the mods have bathrooms? They do not. So that's problematic. It's, um, it means kids going in and out of the building to use the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. And we do um, at Presumpscott, I actually work at Presumpscott. There are six classrooms and modulars at Presumpscott that have been there for 20 years. So um, we, we are well versed in <laughs> kids going in and out. And it's terrible. You know, that's why we're doing this project. It's just terrible. Um, but yeah. They will be going in and out to, to use the bathroom in and out of the building. I might, it might be, given COVID, it might be helpful to have um, freestanding potable water for at least hand washing yeah. In, yeah. The, in the modules. Yeah. It, uh, certainly not. Uh, and for younger children, the kindergartners, I really, I'm, I know I. And we might be in it. I think we might be in a situation where kindergartners will get prior always get priority in these situations yeah. to get the least amount of disruption. Um, so I know I'm pretty sure at Lyseth kindergarten was the only grade that did not move into a modular. Okay. Um, so there is, and the kindergarten wing is actually not getting a ton of reconfiguration. It's getting light renovation. Um, 
you know, feel free to go back and look at the website and it's actually color coded for areas that get heavy renovation, light renovation, and the interior of the classrooms is mostly light renovation and it's not getting completely reconfigured over there the way some other parts of the building are. Great. Thanks. Any other questions or comments or? Jessica, thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. This has been really, really uh, very informative um, and exciting too. Um, it's so, it's very exciting. I know it's exciting for me to talk about. It's been a long haul, but it's exciting to think that this is actually really gonna happen. Yeah, I, I wanna Not that my kids are there anymore, but that's okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how it goes. I'll tell you how it goes. <laughs> Longfellow might, might not be there if it hadn't been for Jess and others advocacy over the years. So she's, been a protector of our schools for a lot of years. So thanks, Jessica, and you're still doing it. So oh, well, thank you. I don't know that I don't know that I deserve all that credit, but thank you. It has been we have had some battles over the years. But, but thanks. All right, great. Well, and feel free to, you know, get in touch with me if you have any questions after the fact. Um, and I can send you the link to the website, maybe john, if people want to check it out, or you want to would be great. That would so, be great. Okay. I can post it on our Facebook page too. Yeah, awesome. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. All right. So, Dennis, nice to not, not to see you, but nice to know you that you're, you're there. And uh, Zach as well. Didn't get to introduce before. Um, so a couple of additions um, for the agenda. Uh, one was from Colin um, about you know, maybe ways to uh, coordinate or collaborate with the Friends of Woodford's Corner. Um, and then my email late this afternoon of, you know, do we want to do monthly meetings? Um, I know I know it is a lot, so it's a lot for me as well. Um, so any other late additions or thoughts about the agenda? Okay. And so everybody, you can mute and unmute yourself. Um, so please feel free to do that. Um, Scott, I'm not sure. I think we'll be here a little bit later. So we'll push the treasurer for now to towards the end. Um, why don't we start with the Halloween? I know it's a little bit out of order, but that might make sense. Does that sound okay? Sure. Um, so John, can you put up the email that Amy sent or should I, tr I, or I can, can I, because that, that really listed all the ideas. Um, do you know, know how to do that? I don't know how to do that. Um, hold on, I lost you. Shoot. Oh my gosh. Why come back? Uh, nope. I don't have it handy. Okay. All right. Well, I uh, I'm gonna have to I see if I can get myself back. Let's Punt the let's punt the agenda item for a little bit. Yeah, very some time. Yep, let's. That sounds good. Um, why don't we go to the candidate forums? Is that okay? Yep. Um. So, when we at our last meeting, we we had hoped to do three candidate forums: the uh, at large, district four, and district five. Um, and the people that were interested, I guess, the committee briefly talked and, and felt like it was too much. Um, and even four and five would be a, quite a bit because we're talking school board and city council for both. Um, so essentially almost four events in two nights. So, but anyway, we've, with the whole election, mail ballots, people voting probably three or four weeks earlier than they normally would, the, the timeline has just gotten shrunk considerably. Um, so, Anyway, long story short, we were able to get everything set up. So we, we have a district four uh, school board and city council candidate forum scheduled for October 5th, which is Monday. Um, and it'll roughly be half of the, the event will be for the school board and the other half will be for the city council. Um, we have 100% attendance for both districts actually for the candidates, which is excellent. Um, so that's for district four and then district five will be Thursday of the same week of the eighth. And that's a little bit more complicated because there's four city council candidates. Um, and then there's two school board. Um, 
district four is two and two as well. So that will be a little bit more time for city council um, than school board, but still a good chunk of time. And um, I'm, I'm excited. I was a little scared and intimidated because it was a lot to kind of pull together, but we did it. And I think it's going to really provide a, a real, really important service for the community, not only for our neighborhood, but for the city. Um, there's only one other district four event. It's only for the city council. That's by the Friends of Woodford's Corner. And that's going to be centric to the Friends of Woodford's Corner. It's, it's going to be more about their issues in particular. So um, our events, I think, are really the only kind of open city events um, that we'll be looking at all of the school board and city councilors for those, for those two districts. Um, so anyway, that's, that's all my information. Colin and Allison and Zach are also involved um, and Sheila as well. If you guys wanna add anything or toss anything out. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Who's, who's on for helping me out on the district eight event at 6.30 to eight on the eighth? District five event on six thirty eight on the eighth. As timekeeper? Yeah. Just double checking. Allison, you're muted. That'll teach me to mute myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm available both nights, so I, I could do both. Okay. Um, if if sure. necessary. Great. Zach, do you want either of those nights? I, uh, I don't think I'm actually free either of those nights, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not really, I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to. Uh, that works out perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, Allison, you're on. Your, your yellow and red pieces of paper then, Zach? Yeah, I know. Yeah, Zach, you've got to drop those off. Yeah. Cauterize them. <laughs> so that's good. And I think next week we've got to figure out the, the actual, just kind of the nuts and bolts of the event, but I'm confident we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, any questions about the events or comments? So you're you're going to set the, the the Zoom thing up. Set up the Zoom. Um, I think we'll do the webinar again, which is a little bit gives us a little bit more tools to work with. Okay. The type of meeting, um, and we'll we'll record it like we're doing this. And our candidate form for um, for the state house in the spring, our first one. Uh, got, I think, around 700 views. It doesn't mean people watch the whole thing, but it means right. that people looked at it at least for a period of time. Um, so it's, it's great. And I think it's really, um, I just think it's really great. And oftentimes these local races, especially with such a, you know, crazy uh, national races happening that these can kind of get lost, but they're really important. You know, these, these will be making decisions about our city government and schools. Um, so I'm really proud of that we're going to be able to do this. So, okay. Anything else about? The yeah, I mean, John, let's just do the transition to the other one because I think it's really quick, right? So you brought up that Woodford oh, yeah. Corner, Woodford Corner is doing something that's Woodford Corner centric. Um, so I just wonder, like, and you know, this isn't on you. This is on us, right? Um, could we reach out to them earlier and say like, let's do, we share district four, why don't we do stuff together and you get your questions, we get our questions. Um, it just seems like um, this will be fine, like it totally fine, like it's not a big deal, um, but it does seem like um, given that we share district four, we should just be ahead of it a little bit more. Yeah, no, totally, and I, I think, the timeline caught everyone off guard. We basically lost a month of time in coming out the summer. And, and this mm -hmm. is new to us too, but I think you're right. And, you know, this, after we get through this, we'll have, you know, a few of these events under our belt and we can start thinking ahead a bunch of months um, and having this, I, Teresa is their director, Teresa Valle, she's terrific. And, you know, we talk off and on, but we will go too many months without talking sometimes. So, um, can definitely do a better job of communicating with her in general, but she's very open. Yeah. Very open. One recommendation, one not, or idea would be invite her and whoever else wants to come over from Woodford Corner to one of our meetings, like take, you know, half hour slot. Like we want to, I don't know if you, I missed whether you line this up, but we should have Sam Zager on the call, right? We should probably have Woodford Corners, you know, like line it. We should just start lining up our half hour guests. And I think Woodford corner, you know, um, leadership 
should be one of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to do that next month? Is that when when you say next month, you're talking October? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that segues into the every other month conversation. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and my my other thought is if it's the, at the end of last next month, um, I personally will have no hair left. I will have torn it all out in <laughs> weeks. <laughs> uh, like, how are you going to look in the end of November? Oh, oh. So you may, could we have a, like a cute kitten meeting in the, at the end of uh, October? <laughs> we can, we can. Um, okay, so do we, let's get into this. And for Bobby and Dennis too, so since we can't see your faces, just just speak up or interrupt us if you need to, okay? <laughs> um, so, you know, okay. <laughs> thanks, Bobby. Um, so, you know, back when we were getting going last, you know, just this winter, we really were getting off the ground. You know, we, I remember we did have this conversation. Do we want to meet every month, every other month? Like, what do we want to do? Um, and we were pretty ambitious, I think. Um, and so I guess, you know, I know it's been hard. It's a historically difficult time, especially if you have kids. Um, in school and all that. Um, so what did, I guess just what do folks think about whether we continue monthly or go bi-monthly or, or what do people think? This is Bobby speaking. Um, I'd be happy with every other month rather than once a month. Okay. Other thoughts? Thanks, Bobby. Um, I, I was thinking that just sort of while we're in these uh, in this pandemic time here, we we might want to go to bi monthly and then and then when things re return to normal, um, mm -hmm. that uh, we we get uh, we could then maybe go to month every month just because we're not going to have a lot of events and things that are coming up right now, you know. So right. yeah, I'm with Zach on that. Right, I agree. Okay, is there anyone that? Feels differently, thinks differently about it. Okay, one of the, so I was thinking about this too, um, and then I was wondering just about the specifics of like the calendar. So November, I don't think we would have a meeting because of Thanksgiving. Yeah, so the, November's meeting would land on Thanksgiving. December's meeting would land on Christmas Eve. For those of you. Oh, I'm free. <laughs> so, so, so let's let's move November's meeting up a week or something like that, right? Well, that's my question. So, you know, we could like and then skip December's meeting, right? Yeah, let me let me just finish. So, we could sure. like do October, take a couple of months off, come back in January, um, or or we could move them off of their normal fourth Thursday of the month dates and just do bi monthly. Um, hmm. I don't, you know, six, six to one half dozen of the other. I don't know if really. Yeah. Doing. Well, well I think, I mean, one, I would thought, imagine. one thought would be, uh, depending on how this Halloween conversation goes, it might be good to do an October meeting, like you suggest, and then do the next one in January. So. I'm, I'm fine with that. What do, what do, what do others think? So, is so January is our, is our general meeting, right? Sorry. Yeah, hold up. Monica first and then Zach. I think that sounds good, what Colin said. Okay. And Zach? Are we still planning to have our general meeting on um, uh, in January? We haven't had, I mean, I, I've kind of assumed that, but we haven't talked about it. Um, right. So would that, would that work, do you think, if we so met in October? Because we can do committee meetings in between, too, as well as email. Uh, coordination and like I think the point being too that we're just not going to have there will be some events but they're the events have been organized for years um, you know and we don't even know if we're going to do them the solstice I don't know if that's going to happen I don't know about the tree lighting either um, and, and, and we don't know about anything I guess really yeah um, I can't see us having a January meeting certainly not inside uh, for uh, as we've had in the past um, so right right yeah it would have so, to be have to be zoom as well yeah it would have to be zoom meeting um well oh, so. we might get more people that way we, we might could. you never know absolutely although we had 
75 or 80. I don't know. Yeah, I know. We'd have to do like a puppet show or something. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to do potluck on Zoom, isn't it? <laughs> I think we have kind of a motion on the table, or a concept at least, uh, to have October's meeting take off December, uh, November and December, and then have our January meeting, and maybe that's our annual meeting as well. Um, what do folks think of that? Yeah. It, it will take some planning though, you know, we'd right. have to have some kind of meeting in order to have the meeting in January, <laughs> it seems, if we're going to open it up to the public or, or as a community meeting. Uh, so I think the annual meeting has to be in February right. and we'd just have, um, uh, you know, take a couple months off, yep. have a meeting, a board meeting in January and then Okay. You know, then we can plan from there. We'll, we'll yeah. know more. Well, now I'm thinking too, I mean, especially given COVID, you know, maybe we're, we're essentially scheduling for six months, what we've just kind of done, or at least we're proposing. And then maybe we do that again after February as well, because we just, we don't know what we're looking at here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that would take us to February. So uh, October, January regular meeting, and then shoot for February for our annual meeting. Yeah. Looks good with that? I like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And this, are we going to do the fourth Thursday of? Um... I thought we had to in order for Sheila to be able to participate. Yeah, I, I think we should stick to, we did set that out. So I think if, if we can, okay. I think it would be good to stick with it. Yeah. I, I don't think it's good to change the day of the week around. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, we do get most of us most of the time. So Dennis and Bobby, anything? all good all good thanks bobby uh, i had one thing um would we want to meet i know we said we don't want to change the date for the meeting but um in january would we want to meet a little bit earlier in terms of being able to plan have time for planning a february meeting uh you know annual meeting no these are good we get we, um, it's good to ask these questions now so if we met in January, it would be January 28th would be the fourth Thursday. Um, yeah, that's right. But if we did our annual meeting the fourth week of February, we'd have a month anyway to do it. So I don't know. Okay, is that okay by the bylaws? Do we have like some restriction on when we can do the annual meeting? No. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I would just check it. But otherwise, I think, you know, doing the fourth week of February would be great because we're all begin snowbound and we can do Zoom anyway. Okay. Okay, I'll check that as we're talking later on through the meeting and see if I can confirm in the bylaws. Um, okay, so it sounds like we're gonna do October. So the next meeting will be October 24th. 24th or 22nd? Sorry, 22nd. And then we'll be back on January 28th. Okay. And um, should I reach out or does someone want to reach out to the friends of Woodford's Corner about the 22nd of October? Who they are. If, you have a, if you've got a personal connection, anyone else got a personal connection to their director? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to call. That'd be great, Jim. Yep. And I think the other thing too is, I mean, they do a lot of great stuff and you know, there really could be a lot of other opportunities to collaborate as well. Um, if they're a really good organization. So I appreciate that, Colin. I think it's a good, really good idea. Okay, so moving on, to, uh, what do we got left here? As far as finances go, I guess I'll just jump into that. I, I don't know for sure, I, I, I could check, but I think we have like three or $400 in the bank. So we're, we're, we're okay, that's after paying our insurance. So I think that's kind of a healthy place to be. It's generally where we've been um, in the past. Um, with the logo, um, we're, we're really close. And for folks who were at the meeting last month, it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think everyone felt that way. Um, Al, yeah, Allison and Dennis are on the committee as well. Um, and, you know, I think the thought is we are in a position where we can you know, have, we could do a, a membership drive and say, you know, hey, if you give 40 bucks or whatever, you get a t-shirt or a hat or something like that. Um, 
So it could be kind of fun um, and help raise some money for the organization. Um, but Dennis or Allison, do you guys want to say anything or? No, I think it's been, it's been great working with Victor. Um, and, uh, and I, you know, I think, I think it looks great. The, you know, the, but anyway, yeah, no, I think it's great. Yeah. Has everyone, has everyone ever seen it? I haven't seen the latest version. Well, give me a minute. I'll, I'll have to come back to it. Any other, um, Dennis, are you there? Can you hear us? Do you want to say anything or? Okay, not, you may have some technical difficulties. I, I, I listened, I watched and listened to the entire meeting, uh, last month's meeting that I missed. And I, yeah. I just love the logo. I loved all the comments too. But uh, overall, I thought it was just great. So I just wanted to share that. I'm, I'm anxious to see what little changes have been made, but I liked it a lot. Yeah, look, it looks pretty much the same. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, actually, though, it does. But the comments that came from that meeting is because basically the reaction was, it looks great, but hey, here's a few ideas. And there were probably four or five of them. And I think we incorporated all of the input into the design. So it was really we were at that refining phase and they were really good. It was really good input. So it was, it's just been a really good process all around. Um, I'll email it out when I, after this meeting um, to folks. Um, I, there was one comment that I, I should have made at that last meeting. And it was just that all the images in the middle, mm -hmm. they were all on the same plane. So the child was the same height on his bike or her bike as the, the adult. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a little depth of field. So maybe the child is a little farther back. And I think maybe, maybe just to clarify um, the different ages and sizes of people. Mm -hmm. But I thought the, that was my only, my only comment. So. Thank you, Terry. Are there any other comments? I'm looking at it now and I will share it. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll get it out after this. Um, oh, hey, Amy. Oh, actually, good timing. Well, let me get your... <laughs> Great. Yeah, actually, <laughs> perfect timing. Okay. So, Amy, you should be able to control your mute. And... So I guess just one thing with the logo. So we'll, the committee will kind of continue on with that and hopefully finalize sometime soon. And then we'll actually, we'll have an October meeting. So I, I think we'll be in a position to do a membership drive in the fall. Um, so it should be good kind of going in. Um, although we're in a decent position now, we really don't have any expenses. Um, so anything else about the logo? Finances? <laughs> you have it? <laughs> I have it, but I don't, I don't know if you can, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, 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 I can get it to you. Yeah. I could send it, maybe. That's yeah. it. Um, okay, so just we're getting a little bit late. Um, Halloween, we've put off, Amy, so it's unbelievable timing on your part. Um, so if you and Terry and anyone else wants to walk us through celebrating Halloween safely. Amy, before you start in on all the um, ideas, yeah, I wanted to just say, um, you know, it was really Monica's <laughs> encouragement that got us rolling, <laughs> and um, I, I, I was uh, actually listening to Dr. Shaw about Halloween, um, and he said that um, the thing about Halloween is it's really a community building activity. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the candy. It's about the magic of the time of year and the being out at night and the imagination and all that. And I think that we, we came up with um, a couple, uh, we brainstormed some ideas. They're not the only ideas, but we just thought about ways to still have some of the magic of the time, but not the, um, uh, putting people at risk. 
Um, so go for it. <laughs> Thank you. John, can I, sh could you allow, can I, can I share? Let me just try and see if I can share. Great. Okay. These okay. are just the ideas that we had had and I'm not sure I had sent these out and I apologize, my mouse is running out of battery, so sometimes I'll <laughs> lose control. <laughs> um, but I don't know how we necessarily want to talk about this. If we just, if people just want to throw out ideas about things that they that they are interested in, um, things that they just think won't work, aren't a good idea. I, does that sound all right to folks? Yeah. 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 So, um, I, as I, I'm not going to read through them because everybody's here and can see them, right? Right. So why don't we just popcorn the best we can in Zoom if anybody has ideas. And I might just jump in because Terry and I had, you know, already spent some time and we thought down at the bottom, the three we thought that would work well together would be to encourage people to have fires to be outside. And then we could send out a message that at eight o'clock or <laughs> some time, everybody howl at the moon just to have like a feeling in the neighborhood that we were all together. We could hear each other in a distance. Um, uh, yeah, I just want to say that that idea came before we were under um, extreme fire danger in the state. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they were saying that not to do any fires. Really? Yeah, tonight. Uh, maybe by October we'll have rain. So that yeah. might be different. Right, we do have a full month. Let's yeah. still aim for that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I have been in touch. Jenny Van West and her husband are willing to support the technical aspects of getting together a neighborhood audio of people um, sharing scary stories or Halloween stories or reading po you know, poems that we could then compile and post and people could listen to just as an audio link. Um, so she's behind that. I can't explain how it will happen other than she will make <clears throat> it so. <laughs> Do we have speakers like we could project that loud enough that people could be oh socially distanced? Because it just seems like wow. that's, one of, that's one of those things people could easily stay six feet apart and listen to a really cool story exchange. What about, what about the football PA system that I can hear from my house? <laughs> right. I know, seriously, and I can hear from my house. All right, let's go to that, the, the rock thing, the, uh, uh, the concert place. Oh, oh yeah. Over in Westbrook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, That's a great idea, Colin. I don't, you know, or, you know, people, I don't, I mean, we have, we have loudspeakers. There could be a number of people in our area that could hear it. I know. Yeah, it could also be <clears throat> regional within the neighborhood. Right. Like we do it, right. It's probably actually safer, right? So we right. do it in multiple different poles yep. around the neighborhood <laughs> every half hour or something. And just to like create the, a fun and creative, because I'm a little worried about you know, I never heard any of the songs from my house and what we that right. were cool in the early part of the season. But if we could put speakers in different parts of the neighborhood and and really reach out, I think it could be super cool. Or have a car going around, you know, like they do for elections. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or a bike. That's <laughs> true. That would be funny. <laughs> Yeah, get a series of people on bikes with boom boxes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're dating yourself, but I like it, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, okay, so call me stuck. <laughs> I'm still stuck on a parade because 
I'm thinking, what about the mother house? It's spooky. Why can't uh, people come through the gate and, okay, you five go through. And it's like a track field that goes around the mother house. And then you can have things around the mother house. Like even some of the residents could participate in just like screaming out of their window or <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> And then you have that big field that the city owns right there as you walk around the mother house. And then you have McCulley, that all that space over there. So you can let a certain amount of people in at a time, like the gates. There's gates here. Monica, I'm 100% in favor of that next year. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, lo I love that I idea. I love it. I love I that idea. I just don't too. think we can go off this year. Spooky. It's gonna be I good. Put a bonfire in the field. I mean that. Right. Would, Look, oh, yes. That would be that would be great. Great. You that could have the so field, great. McCulley over there, and then we could open those front doors and have people looking all ghouly coming out. Okay. Oh, that would be so much fun. That would be so fun. So yeah. fun. Keep yeah. that in mind. Hold on to that idea. Yeah. <laughs> You're in charge of the vaccine, Monica, so that we can do this next October. Okay. Okay, the vaccine. Okay. <laughs> No. Yeah. Um, oh, I love the idea of a big bonfire. Of oh, course. that would be nice. <laughs> so, so a, a lot of you. Well, we're too close to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of you have lived in the neighborhood for a long time, but um, I know Alba Street is kind of the the epicenter of Halloween, and people come with their cars from other towns and drop their children off to trick or treat. And I just wonder, you know, have it, you can't leave a bowl out with candy, even if the candy's wrapped. Um, so we really, I don't know how we encourage people. Well, we're not gonna control that, Terry. No, um, I know we're not, but people should have a way of letting people know that if they're not going to participate in Halloween too, um, I I just hope, you know, I I wanted to do things that maybe they could do over the course of several days, not Halloween night, which is it's tough because Halloween night's a Saturday, so it's all going to culminate. So I, I think we're we're better focus to focus on things we can do that are safe, like encourage safe activities, mm -hmm. but we can't control the other activities. Right. Yeah. But, Terry, I I felt like you were segueing into the bingo. Well, there's the bingo. Yeah. Um, where you can uh, you know walk with your children around the neighborhood and find something at a yeah. house. I you know, a, a bat or a witch or a, a, a pumpkin or a, whatever it is, or a skeleton. Um, and then posting children's costumes in costume, having a costume parade online. Those are all things that people could do over the course because nobody wants to wear their costume once. <laughs> As a kid, you want to wear it all week. <laughs> if you can, sleep in it, eat in it, you know, all that stuff. So we want to give families a chance, children, to enjoy it. And um, that's, that's really, really important. Um, but so it, it is about community more than anything else and the magic of the season. So... We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, so what, can we what, hone in on a few ideas here? Um, yeah. There's well, a lot of good ideas. Yes. So if so, if a kid completes the the bingo board, is there a prize? I mean, do they pick up a candy bar somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't good. got that far. I think it was uh, maybe just uh, it, do, where. What kind of prize could we give that? I think, does it have to, could it be a poem? Could it be a, mm -hmm. um, a they draw a picture and we post the picture. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. I don't think, I, I think the prize is you did it. 
Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm just. Yeah. Silly. Yeah. I'd love. I'd love to have um, some images. Um, some of you may know. In the past, we've done the um, painting on the window fronts in the the storefronts in Deering Center, and for Halloween. And those have always been really popular. And um, so, in lieu of that, perhaps we could uh, again do our uh, encourage children to send in spooky pictures, and we mm -hmm. could post them. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think we had that. We didn't have that one up. But, yeah, we didn't. Uh, and uh, you know. <clears throat> But, but we'd like to hear from other people. What, what else? What, what ideas do you want to see? Those of you with children, maybe? <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of encouraging people to submit um, pictures uh, that we could post on the DCNA Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It's a nice way to have sort of community build around ourselves. <laughs> right. We'd particularly mm -hmm. like to see ways that they could do a costume that incorporates a face mask uh, that would be really um practical <laughs> and fun mm -hmm. yeah. but it doesn't have to be no. could we set it up so that it, it's like a slideshow that plays yeah so it, so it looks like a parade so the people are just you know mm -hmm. so yeah, the, the kids mm -hmm. going by and maybe some music mm -hmm. i'm gonna jump in um it's just, it's getting a little bit late. We're past our, oh no, actually we can use it at 8.30, right? So we do, yeah. I'm sorry, I'll shut up. I'll shut up, I'll make my meetings. Um, well, John, it would be valuable to hear from you. A number of the ideas are related to the Facebook page. Yeah, if no. that's something. I think they can work in a, as well as our website too, because some people are not, you know, Right. right, sorry. People aren't doing Facebook. Yes. So we could do both. Yes. Um, yeah. What I'm thinking too is just kind of thinking about process here. Um, it's a lot of ideas. I think this is probably, you know, I, I think, you know, Monica got us started, really got this off the ground. You guys have kind of joined to get out some different ideas and kind of continue the, the work and the ideas. Um, and I think just kind of process wise, it makes sense to kind of check in with us now what you're doing. But then I think these are bigger discussions that take a look that will take some time. Um, so I'm hoping maybe the committee after this meeting can can go do your work and refine and, you know, and it's okay for you to make your own recommendations that we think we can do these three things. Mm -hmm. and, and just kind of let it keep us abreast of it. Um, I think it's, you know, maybe we can do this tonight, but I don't know, it's a lot to try to go through you know, a dozen different possibilities um, with a bigger group. I don't know. Um, I guess I just want to say it's okay for you guys to run with this if you want to and just continue to let us know what's going on and seek ideas, you know, kind of like what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and let me just agree with that on like, let's, you know, if you, the committee can help narrow it down to three, um, maybe we could do like, you could just ask us all to to send what our top three ideas are and and sure. and whether we contribute right so you, you can't just like say you like the idea right if you like the idea how are you going to help make that idea happen you know right i you know i i love the pumpkin carving idea because that's a multi-day thing right i love um the like you know blasting something really cool in terms of the like stories and and spookiness idea um and i like the bingo idea but so i need to like say that to you guys and then say how i'm going to contribute yeah great yeah and maybe that's a good take to go so are there any on here that people really like maybe if we could just kind of all go through ones that really stand out to you or, or ones that you really don't think are a good idea um so that we can give that information to the committee so they can they can take it and go with it from there. Does that sound like a decent approach? Sure. Okay, so I can't see everyone's faces, but why don't we start, let's see. Allison, wanna just 
we'll just kind of run through everybody if there's highlights or lowlights for you. All right. Love the bingo. I think the virtual parade is a great idea. Um, and the, and the, the howling at the moon, uh, I love. And I also like the idea of pumpkin carving, because that's something everyone's going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. And so if we just, you know, if everyone's got a pumpkin and just sort of, you know, people can wander around and see that, I think those are, those are great. Um, those are my, those are my top. Okay. I'm just going to do this to help me. Yeah. Back of it. Zach, how about you? Oh. Let's see. Um, I, I guess I'm similar. I, I, I like the idea of the, the virtual parade. Um, I like, uh, I like the poem exchange or, I mean, I guess they're kind of a group. I, I, don't know I mean, it's kind of the same thing, the poem exchange. And then also the, um, what is it? Sort of the thing with Jenny Van West, the audio collection right. story archive. I don't know what you want to call it. I like that one. Um, and yeah, I would agree with the, the pumpkin carving. Um, yeah, I guess those. Cool. Thanks, Zach. Monica? <laughs> Oops, we can't hear you, Monica. Oh. You got it? I like, yes, I got it. Okay, so I like the submitting of the videos, um, sending in the pictures of Facebook, and howling at the moon. Oh, I like the howling at the moon. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Pictures from Facebook. Monica, I'm spacing your last name, so you're just M for now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you could tell it to me. Okay. No, over I'm, her thing you get I'm it. just spacing your last name. Thanks, Monica. Bobby? You're welcome. Thanks. I like howling at the moon, <laughs> fires, and carving pumpkins. I'm not so techy, so the Facebook stuff doesn't work for me, but I like the others. Thanks, Father. Fires, fires, fires. Uh, Dennis, I don't know if you can hear us. If you can, I'll give you five seconds to I don't know, fires. join in. Where are the fires? Okay. They're somewhere, but maybe you took it off. I know. Well, then, how about you? You still with us, Colin? Oh, right here, fires. All right. Um, I think Colin took a Oh, Colin, are you there? So what happened to Colin? Maybe he had to go take a break. I will add, um, yeah, the howling at the moon um, and fires, too. I really hope we get some rain. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I actually have, um, they're called fire rainbow, rainbow fire. You add these um, metals to your fire and oh, yeah, it, it cool. comes out all these different colors. Ooh. It's it's really fun. Um, it's really fun. Okay. There they are. So that's, yeah, I agree with those. Um, I just want to thank you guys for doing this too. I think, you know, it's a, it's a really hard time, obviously, and um, I think this could be really something really nice to pick pick up people's spirits. So, uh, uh, were you guys asking me for? Uh, yeah, for what's your vote? Or? Yeah, Colin, what are your thoughts? Oh, and then Monica. Yeah, like I, I'm most excited about the pumpkin carving. I'm most excited about the some kind of way in which we're, you know, projecting spookiness through poems or whatever. Um, I love the idea of like a mobile speakers or a set oh. of speakers. And then, uh, and then the bingo. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Monica. Anybody else? Said I would just want to know if you guys have a, a Instagram page. <laughs> we don't, but we could. Well, actually, no, we don't, but we, we could. I think it would be fun to start one for Halloween, for October. OK. We can do that. What, what, what did Monica say she cut out? Um, do an Instagram page. Oh, OK. More, more picture and video based. Yep. That's yep. easy to do. We can definitely do that. 
Thanks, Monica. Good You're idea. Welcome. <laughs> All right. Um, so Kim, I'm going to call you guys the Halloween committee. Um, is that you and me? Is it is it you and I? To, is it you and me? Too? Anybody else? Is anybody else? else on the committee? Me. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Or if you if you decide later on, you can contact them. Um, and I think with any event too or anything we do, it really comes up to how much work you guys want. Right, exactly. Right? So, exactly. Yeah, we're, the peanut, we're the peanut gallery. We'll give you <laughs> our thoughts um, and support, but it's really gonna be up to you guys. Um, and maybe we can lend a hand in some ways as well. I mean, I can help it obviously with the Facebook and website stuff. Um, I did have one question. Um, not everybody goes online to get their information. I know it's hard to believe. Uh, but um, should we put some posters up in Deering Center when yeah. we when we refine which activities we're going to do? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy. I I've got a trusty staple gun. I love doing that. So <laughs> I'll volunteer for that. For one thing, you're going to have to tell people where to pick up their bingo boards, or are we going to just post it and they print them up themselves? That's that's what we were thinking. Yeah, um, something they could print off on their own. Um, and um, another another fun one, I, I think we, I'm not sure if it made it on here, but is to come up with a a spell. Oh yeah. Um, we had the. Yeah, something with the game. We had it here as a video, Terry. Oh no, I don't want but, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> write a spell. Yeah, write a spell, and uh, I thought that would be a, a fun one too. But. Are there any things that you need from us over the next? So we're we're not that far away, right? We're a little over a month away. Are there things that? you need us to do to help your process or communications or anything? Is there anything we can do to support this effort? Uh, I think deciding, well, I will say, Colin, I love, love, love the idea. Um, it's sending me back to Indonesia and if I'm not, I was imagining perhaps where you've been in Africa, there are speakers on every telephone pole <laughs> because there are in Indonesia. And um, I would need- It definitely brought I, me back. Yeah. I, yes, and I would, I would love for you to sign up for that part of the project <laughs> because that to me is just like, I, I'm, I'm definitely not on that task. <laughs> but, I will support it because I <laughs> love the idea completely. But I think we're gonna um, find somebody who has speakers that love that idea. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> or the I love the riding around in the car too. That's so fun. But I think um, the only thing that to me feels timely, I mean, meaning like we have to get on it quickly is just getting out the word if people want to do the story. Right. Because this, you know, ideally I think it, that word would be sent out in the next few days actually, that people should think about it and then we should start collecting them so then I can turn it over to Jenny who actually has to do the work on it to make it happen. We, so We can send out an email anytime. Okay. And put some signs up, especially around the schools. Yes, yes. So I'm fine if it's, you know, I'm fine with heading that part up and getting that going because it feels time sensitive. Great. Um, yeah, so I'll just reach out. I'll just reach out to folks and maybe we can meet separately to get rolling on stuff. Sounds good. Great. Thank you so much. This is exciting. Thank you. Cool. Um, is there anything else about that or anything else that we want to talk about?
Is that Scott? Scott is here. Wow, Scott. <laughs> you can unmute yourself, Scott. There you go. I am now unmuted. Hi, how's everyone doing? Good. Good, we're good. We've nominated you to be on the Halloween committee. No. <laughs> You're in charge. Like, You're in yeah, charge awkward. of the new Halloween. All right. You're in yeah. charge of building the bonfire and making sure it doesn't catch, you know, the, the, it doesn't, the neighborhood doesn't go up in flames. <laughs> Sounds good. What are we? What are we doing? We are just kind of finishing up. You just got here just in time. Um, <laughs> is there any? Well, actually, do you know offhand what our um, what our balance is? Our bank balance is? Um, I do not, but I will open an envelope and send you guys an email. How's that? Okay, that's great. It's not a huge deal. I think I know. Yeah. What you're yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any other? Any other business? Anything else? Um, I do have a quick question. Sure. Um, have you guys seen the images of what Longfellow uh, might look like? Yeah, we did. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Marino was the presenter at the beginning. So oh, she okay, walked cool. us through. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. All right. Uh, are we good? We're good. All right, next, next meeting, October 22nd. Okay. And um, Scott, we're going to take off November and December and then come back in January. So October and January will be our next two meetings. Okay. And annual meeting will be in February. So that's a little bit, a little bit of new business. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see everybody. All righty. See you all. Uh, take care. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye. Get on. Controller. Bye.